We're live in Studio B with your day-to-day BYU Sports Play-by-Play. I'm Spencer Linton alongside Jason Shepard. And highlighting this big show is the head football coach at BYU, Kalani Satake. Welcome back, Coach. Excitement with some some new changes to your staff. We went through all those off the top of the show. Um, Would love to hear your your reaction to having all of this finalized and and increasing your support staff for BYU football. Well, change is good. And um, so there's always hope that Shep will one day gritty for us. <laughs> oh, <laughs> did did you see my gritty? I saw that. I was think? impressed. What yeah. did you think? That was really nice. But Thank don't you. don't you think that I respect the gritty enough to not no, do its, its damage? It's, all about effort and energy. Okay. That's all. <laughs> I, so I've been called out by the coach. I will, yeah, that, I will. I will. I will do. Give it, it some thought. Okay. Anyways, right. yeah. In regards to the hires and uh, the new positions, you know we. Um, I think this is kind of a wave of, of hires and things that need to be done. Um, when Tom mentioned the what we're going to try to do, prep, prepping for the Big 12, and uh, we've had a, a great support staff, but uh, looking at, at the things that John Swift and, and Jason IU and Jack DeMooney had to do, uh, it just spread way far too thin. And uh, it would be the equivalent of uh, just the coordinators um, and, and myself being the coaches and not having assistant coaches. And so now we're adding um, players uh, to, to the mix as far as uh, staff members that, that can um, allow our guys to ha- collaborate with other people but also share in the responsibilities. And then uh, looking for opportunities to highlight and even Im- be more impactful and more efficient as a staff overall. That's the key, and, and this is a – a wave of hires that we've made, and, and we're looking forward to adding more uh, support staff and, and more parts to our, our coaching staff that's going to allow us to be more efficient and, and work effectively in 2022 season and also going forward into yeah. the Big 12. Well, and it's like everybody's so excited about the future and where the program's going and the, and the move to the Big 12, and these are one of those things that kind of helps make it feel more real. It's some of those things that are in the works and happening as you look to make that jump in a year. Yeah, definitely. And and I think the, um, I mean, it's, it's what everybody else is doing, you know, and I think there's a, there's some parts where you, you, we do what we do because we're BYU and we're always going to be unique and have our own competitive advantages. But this is some things that need to happen in order for us to work uh, with our players. And, and, and all these men are going to be involved in, in uh, you know, just being in, in connected to it and mentoring our players. That's a, the main thing is to give our players the best experience that they possibly can. And um, when we had a smaller support staff, it got to the point where we needed to borrow our equipment manager in, in Billy Nixon up to, to do some things for us with our, our campus experience and, and our players' experience. And so now um, I, I feel like we're, we're in a better situation with, with the new guys coming on and, um, and then looking forward to making more hires. I, I mean, for, for me, I, I don't have all the answers, but I guarantee we can get a group of people that, that can help our program uh, be a lot better than what we've been already, and we've been pretty good so far. Kalani Satake, the head football coach at BYU, is on BYU Sports Nation. I was hanging out with Billy in his office, in his old office now, down in the equipment room last Friday, and uh, got a heads up that this was happening. How will his responsibilities change? Because I know some BYU fans are like, no, he did such an incredible job with the equipment and the uniform releases and the unveils and like all this. How, how is his role going to shift? Well, he'll still be uh, involved with that part. and It would just be now that um, – He's not going to be doing a lot of the hands-on stuff in the equipment room. We, we hired Josh to do that, you sure. know, and and and, uh, and he's gonna he's right in line with what Billy does. Billy was involved in in making that hire, and, and so uh, all all the different positions, uh, we we looked into it and we interviewed a bunch of people and great candidates, and uh, these these are the ones that I feel like are going to help us the most, especially with this uh, first wave of hires. You know, I think there's a good foundation to build it on, and. Uh, we'll, we'll see what else we can add from it. I'm, I'm trying to ask for as many as we can, <laughs> yeah. possibly. You know, I just that's uh, I want to incorporate a, a, a team full of wonderful people that can help us, uh, you know, fly or, fly higher than we've been before. A lot of great names on that. And for the record, Billy's built enough helmets. He's built enough helmets. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think this is, and 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 I think um, it's utilizing everybody to the fullest and and getting the most out of all our staff members. I've been really thankful for the. The, the work that, that the support staff has done for us in the past, including Billy and Jason and Jack and, and John. And now it it, it um, relieves them for a lot of responsibilities, but it also allows them to focus on and hone in on, on just mastering their their craft and and uh, finding a purpose and um, looking at better ways to, you know, to magnify their jobs.
Speaking of getting the most out of people, I would say uh, Tyler Algier. You got the most out of him during his time at BYU, and uh, what a great weekend for him uh, to be drafted in the fifth round. And and we were talking about this when when you actually look into it, like you're going to be happy getting drafted anywhere. But this is, looks like a really, really good fit with a great opportunity for Tyler Algier with the Falcons. What, what did you make of him being drafted there? Yeah, I think it's a great fit. And, and when you get to the NFL, it's, it's really trying to get through the um, – make the team have a purpose and then and a role and then get to that next contract. And that's – I think he's set up in a great position now with, with the Falcons. And um, their style of offense fits uh, what he does and his strengths. And then I think he'll be able to do so many different things. But he has a great attitude. He – he can play anything. He can play defense, obviously, and he'll have a, a great role with, with him on special teams. And I know a lot of coaches love having a player that's versatile and can do a lot of different things, especially helping out in special teams. He's obviously incredible at finding the hole, making the cut, and going. And within zone schemes, you're right, it looks like a good fit with the Falcons. Why do you feel like uh, schematically he, he is going to indeed fit with the ATL and have a really good opportunity to make an impact on that team? Yeah, I think his style of running the ball is going to fit perfectly. And the way they utilize their running back in the passing game as well. And then I think that just because he can play special teams, he's going to add more to it. And, um, you know, when you have a 53-man roster, you have to use different people in different spots. And so he's a guy that's open to do that. He has uh, history, a resume of playing on both sides of the ball. Uh, I just think that he can find the end zone better than a lot of people, and I think that's going to be huge for uh, the Falcons using him in the red zone and and, and being able to work with the, the core the running back core that they already have right now. There's a long history of guys that signed undrafted free agent contracts that made it into the NFL, and not just got on a roster, but made an impact. What do you think of the three uh, Samson, you had James Empey and then Neil Pau. Uh, what do you think of their chances uh, at the next level? Yeah, I think I think just the fact that they were able to pick their their um, their team. When you get towards the end of the draft, and sometimes uh, guys would rather have the uh, luxury of being a free agent because then you're going to have three or four teams to choose from, and you can pick the situation that's going to be more beneficial for you making the team. And I think all three of these uh, young men had that opportunity going into the decision-making process, and I think that uh, you know these programs, uh, these franchises are going to be really happy that they got these guys there. And, and it all it all depends on staying healthy and working through fall camp, but. All those, all those guys are versatile too. You look at James. James can play any position on the O line. Uh, when you can, you have a guy that can play. And I talked about the 53-man roster, an O lineman that can play center, guard, and tackle. That you, you need that on your depth. And then you're looking at, at, at the things that Samson and, and Neil do. The big, big, tall, lengthy receivers that all, all, uh, all those guys have played a number of games. But uh, Neil and, and Samson can play special teams as well. I know we, we've talked to you, and we, when we had Chad on, Chad Lewis last week, kind of asked him a, a question in terms of what type of questions scouts ask about these players. Uh, I'm curious, whether it's you or anybody on the staff, once the draft starts, do you guys still get phone calls about guys, like you maybe hear from a team, like you were thinking about maybe taking this guy at this pick. What, do you still get calls during the draft about guys? Yeah, a little bit, and, and it's more just – because the draft is you can't predict. I think most people can predict maybe the first round and a half. After that, it, it just it just it's kind of go down your list, and sometimes a, a list will go further. I, I didn't know quarterbacks were going to be that uh, thin in the draft, yeah. especially on the first uh, two days, you know. But um, you look at it, and 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 they have to make adjustments, and sometimes they'll reach out and call us and talk to us, and we're always going to be supportive of our boys, you know. But uh, most of the talking happens before the draft, and even sometimes afterwards. A big summer awaits you before a huge schedule that we're obviously really excited about opening up in Tampa, at Raymond James Stadium. Maybe Tom Brady will be there, Jason. I don't know. <laughs> Why are you looking at me? <laughs> I don't know. Because you're the NFL guy. Uh, <laughs> but obviously, there's a lot to be done this summer. Um, it starts with your staff. What do you want your guys to do this offseason that maybe they haven't done before? Or is it just maintaining what they've been doing before in, in previous offseasons to keep this high level going? Yeah, I, I just met with the, the uh, defensive players. Um, I'll meet with the offense in probably 45 minutes or okay. so and, and, and uh, just discuss a couple of things, our, uh, the expectations that I have of them. And, and most of it is for them to take care of each other and, and uh, to get better as a team. And, and, and a lot of that is a team camaraderie, but also the team chemistry. Uh, 
the older guys teaching the, the younger guys uh, how to do it and uh, the scheme, the, the, the increasing our football IQ on the team and, and finding ways to increase our uh, opportunities to learn and to love each other, you know, and love what you get to do here. I, th I think this is the time where nobody gets to see these guys running stadium stairs and all that stuff right now, but this is where you build the, the tough part of, of the sacrifices that's going to take, that's going to require for you to, to actually perform better in the fall. And, and we need to find ways to stay healthier as a team. That, that, that's uh, physically, uh, mentally, and, and try to find better ways to, to just be a healthy overall team. And, and that happens in the off-season conditioning and it happens with connection and, and everybody be able to help each other out. There was a chance that we may have had an idea of what Big 12 divisions were going to look like this week. But now there was a report that divisions may not necessarily uh, be necessary moving forward. How involved in that type of stuff are you? or is it kind of Tom kind of handles it and just keeps you up to date? How, how do you handle that? Yeah, t that's Tom's um, department. And then I, I know we have uh, Big 12 spring uh, coaches meetings coming up. You know. Is that wild for you? Is that uh, wild? I mean, I'm always looking forward to find ways to get better. And there's a lot of things I can learn in, in these meetings from a lot of great people that are bright minds. And, and so I, I sit there and try to soak it in as much as possible. And uh, But I, I'm focused on the, on the season this fall and we have a number of seniors that this is their last season going into uh, and ending their careers so I want to make sure that they get all my energy and all my focus uh, I know I'll be in this meetings so I don't know how much I'll be saying or how much I'll be speaking but I'll be listening and just trying to prepare for it but it'll be good to see all the other coaches there and then kind of it's kind of fun to, to be in, connected and seeing everyone but uh, I, I can't wait for for football season Kalani Satake, the BYU head coach, is on BYU Sports Nation. I want to ask you about your quarterback, Jaron Hall. He technically has two years of eligibility remaining, and I joked with him, hey, have you thought about being the guy that takes BYU into the Big 12? And he's like, well, I'll cross that bridge when it comes to that. But, I mean, it looks like he's going to be a guy that's going to be slated for the NFL next year. Um, what makes him, or I guess in your opinion, why do you feel like he has a chance to be – what many are projecting a first or second round pick after this upcoming season? Well, I think he, he he's not the only one in that in that um, that has that situation where he could possibly leave. And I think for um, for me, it's just seeing him, uh, you know, graduate, get his degree, and then we'll see what happens afterwards. But uh, the focus has to be, and I think he's doing the right thing when he tells you he's just worried about this season. Uh, that's all we need to worry about. And and, and when you start thinking about the future. Uh, you, uh, sometimes entitlement and uh, you start to lose a little bit of humility and that guy's all humble. So he's, he's going to be focused on this year and let's, let's do whatever we can as a program to make it really hard for him uh, later on in December to make a decision, you know, but until then let's, let's just keep focusing on this season. And I think that um, we have a number of guys that, that have, will have an extra year of eligibility. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I like to have them all back still, but uh we can't really worry about that. If if, if we want to, if they really want to move on and play in the NFL, the, the better teams that when you have a great year, they get drafted. That's I what guess happens. it's a good problem to have, right? right? Yeah. Well, you want to you want to get drafted, do what Georgia did, yeah. Right, and they got a bunch <laughs> of guys drafted. So that's how, that's how you that's how you get drafted. You win as a team and you go together, and yeah. that's got to be the focus. And teams that focus on this year will will get it done. The ones that worry about the future um, before actually taking the first step, they're going to find out really. Uh, a tough way that it doesn't work that way. Look, and I love the fact that you you don't shy away from saying you want to put guys in the NFL. If, if it's their dream and they're good enough to do it, you want to help them achieve that goal. We were having this discussion last week heading into the draft. Obviously, this year you had the one, and that's kind of what we expected going in. The year before, you have five. What's the sweet spot for you guys? Do you, do you want to have like a certain number? Like you feel like if we can have two or three, or is there a number like that that you feel year in and year out? If you can produce th that number of NFL guys, how that reflects on the program? Um, I, I don't. I don't know about a number other than I just want to get them all drafted. <laughs> I want. I, I said before that <laughs> I want. I think the NFL needs more BYU guys uh, in the league and. Uh, I'm going to do everything I can to help them get there. And it's their dream, right? Uh, uh, I think everybody talks about graduating from here one day. Um, no one, you know, n not like we sit there and check up on their GPA. So uh, as long as they're making progress to graduation, there's a way that you can progress to, to making it to the NFL as well. And so 
Uh, my job is to make sure that it fits in line with what they're doing as a, as a uh, member of their family, uh, their friend. I mean, it, it's all got to be, you got to be well balanced, but uh, there's nothing wrong with putting goals out there and, and speaking it and, and making sure that you put it out in the universe and trying to make it come, make it a real, a real reality. But before you leave, uh, we need to ask you about your summer plans. Any vacation upcoming? I know you've got. Uh, you went to Disneyland before the last. Did, last yeah. time you were you here, you Disneyland went to Disneyland in the rearview mirror. Yeah, it was it was a, a last second decision to go to Disneyland, and I'm glad I got to see a bunch of BYU fans there. So that was a lot of fun. <laughs> um, but yeah, we got a baby coming in, in July. Yes. So I'm not. And, and you know, we have uh, three other other children that we need to take care of, and I have one that's graduating, and so. Um, I have to train my 11-year-old and get him ready for football, you know, all that stuff. So uh, just going to be a dad and, and be a coach and have a lot of fun. But um, just looking forward to it. it. Just as time goes by, we're getting closer to the season. I'm, I'm really, really getting – I mean, just the, the excitement is starting to grow. Did you get on Rise of the Resistance? Were you able to go on that ride? No. I, I, well, I, I mean, I don't – I love Disneyland. I don't really care for the rides all that much, <laughs> um, but I'll do it if my kids ask me to, and then sure. you know try to rep the Y in the pictures You're for, for kids. Yeah, that's that's what it's all about, okay. right? right? I mean, we said that the, the masters were for you yourself if you want to be selfish. Yes, but if it's about the family and the kids, you go to Disneyland. I was, yeah. selfish, I was, you go into the masters. Very he was all about the family going yeah. to Disneyland. Yeah. Trust me, I, I, think, I think there's a way you could do both, guys. Kalani, the question is, do you want to be selfish with me at the Masters next year? I would love to. <laughs> and, 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 uh, and then we'll go to Disneyland some other time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll gritty on our way uh, yes. up to the Masters uh, main gate. Yes. Yeah, we'll, we'll have a, like a flash mob of gritties okay. going on. We'll do that. I, I watched yours. I watched the tutorial, and then I watched yours, and I was like, okay. I got. I got to represent. Like I, did I, you see that the creator of the gritty reached out to Sports Nation about his gritty? Really? Yeah. yeah. The guy with criticism. It was laughing emojis. So we're not laughing, sure how to take that. Laughing until I cry emojis. <laughs> well, that's all it's about is making people happy, <laughs> yeah. right? We're, we're not. We're not doing it to try to get a, a high score. We're doing it to to show people that we are committed to making them smile. You got it. There you yeah. go. Yeah. We need to get you there. I saw Tavita Ofengawe and Gary Fino there. Like we. Kalani needs to be at the Masters. I, I wouldn't turn it down. <laughs> Thanks for coming in, Coach. Great Appreciate it, guys. Go Congratulations Cubs. on the expanded staff. Thank you.